we're going to give you a bit of a look at teacher dashboard. Um, uh, and on the call, as I mentioned, I've got uh, with me Greg Salerno, who's our Cloud Share Support Officer. And uh, we've also got on the call uh, Lenva Shearing. So uh, Lenva, uh, if you look down in the Hangout window, Lenva's waving right now. If you want to get a, a closer look at Lenva, you can click on her little thumbnail in the Hangout window, and that will make her come up uh, on your screen. If you, if you do that and you want to come back to the slides, you'll see the slides in the little thumbnail as well, and you can just click on that. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're just going to give you a quick look at uh, some of the benefits of using Teacher Dashboard, and then we'll um, do a, a couple of very quick demonstrations, given that we're, we're a bit short on time. And then I'm going to throw over to uh, Lenva, who's going to talk about some of the new features coming to Teacher Dashboard uh, later this year and early next year. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much the agenda, agenda for today. Uh, in terms of you interacting and asking questions, uh, on the VC system, please just unmute your microphone and go ahead and interrupt and ask us. On the Hangouts, if you want to uh, put, a, put a question in the chat window, that's great. Uh, Greg Salerno's monitoring the chat and he can respond to you or if we need to ask the question, we can ask it out, out aloud. Okay? So let's get started. Um, the first question that we normally like to, ha um, to cover off is, what's Teacher Dashboard for? So I'm sure all of you are aware that we have in our Cloud Share environment a staff world and a student world. That is, all teachers are together in our staff environment. That's why when you type an email to somebody, you see lists of email addresses coming up from other staff members, not just at your school, but from any of the 150 schools in the diocese. And that environment is separate from but connected with the student environment. So all 14,000 staff in the staff environment, they're the at-sit addresses. All um, 68,000 students in the student environment, they're the at-sit stew addresses. And that works really well for a number of different reasons. It makes peer-to-peer uh, -peer collaboration uh, between teacher-to-teacher -teacher very seamless and student-to-student -student pretty easy as well, right? And as you're probably aware, you can share information across the two environments. So you can create a document in the staff environment and then share it across to the student environment. However, that sharing is not always as simple and seamless as it could be, right? There are, there are certainly ways that we can improve making the sharing of uh, documents, blogs, sites, whatever it is, calendars, across between those two environments a bit more seamless. And that's where Teacher Dashboard comes in. So Teacher Dashboard, if you like, is the missing link between those two worlds, the staff world and the student world. Because what it does for teachers is it helps teachers view and manage what students are doing in their student world, in their Google world. So to give you an example, if a student creates a Google Doc in their own Google Drive and doesn't share it with you as their teacher, then you have no view to that Google Doc. You have no idea that that Google Doc exists. It could well just as well be on a USB stick sitting in their bedroom. You have no idea that it exists. Similarly, if they create a Google site or post to a, to a blog in Blogger or share a photo via Picasa, you as the teacher don't have view, any view on that. Why? Because it lives in a separate world to you, right? And it's not shared with you. What Teacher Dashboard allows you to do is get access, quick and easy access, to the documents, the blogs, the sites, the photos, the emails that students create, whether or not they share it with you. So that's the purpose of Teacher Dashboard, to give you, the teacher, a way of viewing and managing what students are doing in their Google, in their Google environment. Uh, hopefully you've been given a URL by your TD manager at your school to access Teacher Dashboard. If you haven't, you can ask the TD manager at your school for that, and that will give you access to, to Teacher Dashboard that's been set up in your school. Um, Teacher Dashboard comes a lot with a lot of help and training. Uh, you'll see the, the examples of that in a, in a few moments. And they're just a click away for you when you're using Teacher Dashboard. Uh, we've built a number of, or Harper, I should say, who, who built Teacher Dashboard, have built a number of training resources that you can get access to. So what are the benefits that teachers see in using Teacher Dashboard? 
So I guess we, we get constant feedback that there are kind of four main things that, that Teacher Dashboard helps teachers with. The first is that it saves them time. It simplifies collaboration with students. It helps them give timely feedback to students. And it also helps with those digital citizen, citizenship messages that we want to give to students, helping them manage their um, digital world better and be better digital citizens. So rather than just um, talking the talk on that, what I want to do is show you some practical examples of that. So I'm going to now uh, flick over to a student user. So I'm, you should be able to see a screen now which has got um, the user is uh, Elsie Hutton. So this is a real student account. Uh, I'll just show that uh, in grid view. We're looking at Elsie's Google Drive at the moment. Right, there's her Google Drive. So if Elsie's working on something, so say, I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Elsie's working on this elephant's presentation. I'll just open it up in a new window. So remember, I'm logged in as a student here, Elsie Hutton. And there's Elsie working on her presentation. If she wanted to share that with her teacher, she'd have to click the share button, and then she'd have to enter the teacher's name, whatever that was, make sure she got the email address, then click share. Now that's okay, that's, that's pretty doable. If she needed to share it with multiple teachers, she'd have to type in all those email addresses, right? But there should be an easier way to do sharing. And with Teacher dash Dashboard, there certainly is. Instead of Elsie having to click the share button and if you like, share manually, all she needs to do is take that elephant's presentation and drag and drop it into one of the folders that's already been set up for her in Teacher Dashboard. So say the science folder, drag and drop it. It moves it into that folder, and now that's shared with the teacher automatically. So that's all Elsie had to do. So that's why we say Teacher Dashboard saves time. Those folders have already been set up for all of your students, right? Elsie and others, right? All the students in your classes, if you're on Teacher Dashboard. And it saves students time by making it easier to share files. So now as the teacher, if I go in as the teacher now, so I'm Greg Basford, I'm gonna to go to, into Elsie's class. Now again, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So this is what Teacher Dashboard looks like for uh, Elsie, uh, sorry, for the teacher of Elsie's class. Just zooming in a little bit. So right now I'm looking at all of the different folders that Elsie has in her Google Drive. So you can see homework, religion, general, English, mathematics, and there's that science folder. So I'm gonna click on that. And in a moment, that will refresh. Give it a second. And what we should see, by the way, those folders, of course, um, are me looking at what's in the student's Google Drive, right? There's those science, English, homework, etc. The, the, the student's Google Drive. And so there, if I zoom in a little bit more, there's Elsie, and there's that elephant's presentation that she was just working on, right? So. As the teacher, you get to have access to that document straight away, right? Simply by Elsie putting it in that folder. The good news is Elsie doesn't even have to file it away in that folder for you as the teacher to have access. We'll show you if we get a chance, depending on time, how easy it is to see uh, documents that are not even shared with you. As long as it's in Google, uh, Elsie's Google Drive, you'll be able to see it. So that's saving you time and simplifying collaboration. It simplifies collaboration by one, making it easy for Elsie to share things with you, but also Elsie could be working on the document. So say she's working on this slide and she's you know, adding in the different things that, um, that uh, elephants eat, right? Plants, maybe flowers, kind of plant, leaves, grass, whatever. And you as the teacher, can click on, so I'm back looking at the teacher, as a teacher now, I can simply click on that presentation and it opens it up for Elsie and I to collaborate on. So now, here I am, I know it's probably a little bit difficult to see in the, in the uh, presentation because it's a, a, little bit, um, uh, a little bit zoomed out, I'll just zoom in a little bit more. So here I am looking at the presentation 
And there's Elsie also on the presentation. So Elsie and I can be collaborating together on that one. Now, of course, you can do this manually. You know, Elsie could share the document manually with it and you could, you could um, open the document via your Google Drive through Shared With Me and open it that way. But with Teacher Dashboard, it makes it easier for you to quickly see all of the documents that are being shared by all of the students and open them quickly, uh, uh, quickly and easily. So that's why we say saves time, simplifies collaboration. So, so folks, I, I hope that's making sense to you that Teacher Dashboard is saving time, simplifying collaboration, allowing you to do feedback. That digital citizenship message, with Teacher Dashboard, you don't just get access to uh, their documents. You can also get access to things like their blogs. So for instance, over here, I can see posts and comments from blogs. Um, uh, to give you an example of that, uh, I'm not sure if uh, we've got one here. You can see a whole bunch of documents here from a 11 ancient history class over at DLSL Reevesby. What I'll do is I'll go to um, one of the other schools. I'll go to uh, DLSL Caringbar. And I'm going to look at their Tech Kappa class because I know that in their Tech Kappa class they use Blogger to do blogs. Well, they have been using that. I think they were doing that uh, in term two. So I'm going to open up that Tech Kappa class. So this is the interface that you see when you're in Teacher Dashboard. So here's all the students in that Tech Kappa class. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit Posts. And this is going to show me the various posts. I'll just zoom in on a couple of them. Right. These are the posts that, that kids have put in for some work that they've done in the, uh, it looks like in the creative arts section of, tech, of uh, uh, technology and design. So what's my point here? My point here is that Teacher Dashboard is helping you to enforce those digital citizenship message by, messages by giving you, the teacher, a view of what students are doing right across their Google world. Right, whether it's Docs or Sites or Blogger, Picasa, etc. I'm going to pause there for a moment and see if there's any uh, questions or anywhere I need to join the dots. Anybody got any questions either on the Hangout or on VC? If not, we're going to push on. Okay, I'm going to push on. So let's have a quick look then. We'll, uh, we'll do a, a, a bit of hands-on. So just before we get on to the hands-on, um, one of the things that we encourage um, staff to do is to sign into your Chrome browser. So if you're using Chrome, we hope you're using Chrome. When you're using Teacher Dashboard, in fact, when you're using any of the Google products, it's much easier for you if you sign into Teacher Dashboard, uh, sorry, sign into Chrome. If you're like me and you've got multiple devices, like I have iPhones, iPads, etc., and you want to synchronise your use of Google across the various devices that you use, like the tabs I have open, the bookmarks I have in Chrome, etc., you can do that by signing into Chrome. You use the little, ha I call it the hamburger menu, the little three-line menu in the top right-hand corner of Chrome. I won't go into that now, but that's something you can take away and, and we'd strongly encourage you to sign into Chrome. If you're in a high school, your students should also be signing into Chrome, right, because they've got their own device. If you're in a primary school and students share devices, don't get them to sign into Chrome because it's designed for one-to-one -one environments, right, where students have access to a single device, right, their own, their own device. Okay, uh, we've talked about that. So let's do a little bit of hands-on. Let me get out of that. So let's just take a quick, a quick view of the Teacher Dashboard interface. I'm going to use, um, I might actually use this Tech Kappa class as an example. So I'm going to go into the TAS folder here. And I'll also use um, Elsie's example as well, as well. So as you can see in the, uh, in the Teacher Dashboard interface, when you um, go into Teacher Dashboard by that link, you'll see the classes that you've been given access to. Now, if you only teach one class, so you're in a primary school, you'll just see one link to those classes, right? A single, a single panel. If, you've, uh, if you're a high school teacher and you've got multiple classes, 
you'll see multiple classes listed there. And of course, you just click on the link to open the class. So I clicked on the STMNS1 link here, right, over here, and that opened up Elsie's class, right? But here's a DLSL Reasby class, and that's another class that I have access to. There it is there, right? And that will open up that DLSL Reasby class. Now, because, actually, because that's got a lot of documents in it, I might use that one while we do the demonstration. So once you go, and of course, please, if you've got access to Teacher Dashboard, go into it now and see if you can follow what I'm doing here and, and work with me on this. So up the top of the screen, we've got our grey menu bar. This basically categorises the different kinds of actions that you can do in Teacher Dashboard. The main one that you'll spend time in is the Dashboard section, right, which shows you what students have going on in their Google Drive, in their Google Sites, Google Blogger, comments on blogs, and Picasso web albums where they can store photos, etc., photos and pictures. Across the top, you can also look at their Gmail. Now, there are some restrictions on that. We won't go into that, but basically, most teachers will have access to any emails that are sent between them and the students. You can get class information. So you'll get information about the class. One of the useful things that I like to point out about the class info is the teacher dashboard, I'll zoom in on this again, teacher dashboard has set up for you a class email address. So if you want to email all the students in your class and any fellow teachers in this class, so in Gordon's case, Gordon Bobbin who runs this ancient history class, uh, would be Tim Logue, his principal, myself, uh, Lauren and Jeff. Jeff's the T, uh, TD manager and TAS coordinator. Lauren, I think, team teachers with Gordon. Right? Then sending an email to that address will send an email to all of the students in the class plus those teachers. So that's a really useful thing. You can also do a couple of other useful things like refresh class information and fix class folders. I won't go into that. Your TD manager can explain that to you. We'll talk about Interact later on. And the other section is the sharing section. So I mentioned before the sharing, uh, sorry, I mentioned before that students don't have to file away their documents in order for you as their teacher to have access to it. So for instance, here I am back looking at Elsie. I'm now looking at her Google Drive again. There's an animals presentation, a similar presentation to the elephants one. But you'll notice that it's not filed away in any folders. It's completely private to Elsie. But in this unshared section, you would still have access to that. So the good news here, and, and remember, this was not possible before Teacher Dashboard. You now have access to documents that are not shared with you, right? Such as in um, Elsie's teacher's case, the animals presentation. Back to the, and we'll talk a little bit more about sharing later on. Back to the dashboard. Let's have a quick look at the dashboard. So I'm going to zoom in on, uh, just, just so it's a little bit easier to see, I'm going to zoom in on uh, some of the documents there. So I'm looking at Aidan Proudfoot, which is one of the teachers in Gordon's Ancient History class. You can see that I've got a list of documents there. Right now, I'm looking at the last 15 items. I might just restrict that at the moment and just look at the last three. So I'm just going to look at the last three. And again, I'm going to zoom in so you get a good look at this. So the first document that's listed there is this SN Cities Vesuvius. So it looks like it's a, a document that Aidan's been working on. You'll notice that where it says modified, there's a dash. That means the last person to make a change to it was Aidan himself. And you'll notice also that it was last updated six hours and 22 minutes ago. Have a look next door to Aidan. There's Andrew. Andrew's also working on this document, right? And he last updated it five, five hours and nine minutes ago. So he's been doing a little bit of work on that today. So Teacher Dashboard shows you when these documents were last updated. If I point at the document, you can see I get a little thumbnail rollover. I might need to zoom out for this so you get a better look at it. There's uh, actually, I might use that one instead. The area of Campus Marish or Martius by Aidan Proudfoot. So this, in this case, is a presentation. When I hover over it, I get some information about that. For instance, who the author is, in this case it's Aidan, whether or not it's shared with anyone, and you can see it's writable by all of those teachers, 
and when it was last updated and last viewed, right? Which was last term sometime. Okay, so obviously Aiden hasn't done any work on that for a little while. Okay, so I hope you're getting the idea that with the documents here, you can see the work that students are doing on, on their on, in their Google Drive. I'm just going to move over to the top right hand corner now and have a look at a couple of these icons here. The first icon is this little A to Z sorter. Let you sort first name, last name, etc. Also let you sort by class groups. I'm just going to cancel and show you what I mean by that. I'm going to put Aiden into a cup into a coloured group. I'm going to put him in the group blue blue group. I'm going to put Anthony there as well. I'm going to put uh, Andrew into uh, the green group, George into the red group, uh, let's say Joshua into a red group and uh, into a uh, green group as well. When I sort now and sort by class group, you'll see that it now organises those, the reds together, the greens together and the blues down there and up the top. So you can organise by that. But you might be asking yourself, well, what's the point of having these different coloured buttons? What do the buttons mean? Well, when you look at next to the A to Z sorter, there's a little button just there which says class group settings. So I can click on that class group and now I can make the colours mean something. Like they're in the uh, top literacy group, say the literacy runners group. Maybe the, the green group are in the literacy joggers group and the bottom group are in the literacy walkers group. And that's going to help me. I hit save. Now those, now those colours mean something to them. Maybe I've got a task that I want to distribute and I want to differentiate across that task. As in, I only want the walkers to receive one task while the runners receive a different task. Right? Having those coloured buttons, as you'll see in a minute, will allow us to do that and differentiate that task. Last thing I want to show you in the dashboard is that you can filter things out. So if you end up with lots of documents, you can filter something. So I can see there's some stuff that, um, uh, on the title cities, or it's got cities in the title. I can start looking for things that have just got that cities word in it. Right? So that filters out on the title. So that's the dashboard, and you can see that I'm looking in a particular folder in the student's Google Drive. I could, As I showed you before, you could also look at Google Sites, their posts, in blogger comments. I won't go into Picasso just in, in the interest of time. Okay? I'll just pause there again. Any questions on that so far, on looking at the dashboard in Teacher Dashboard? Clear as mud, I hope. It's always great when we get lots of feedback. Yeah. Okay, we're going to push on if there's no other questions. Remember, you can uh, just mute your, unmute your microphone. I'm so going to assume there are no questions because it's nice and clear. Sorry, we, here's a question, please. At Crampy, can, yeah. the students, can the students see the colour groupings? Very good point. Um, no, that's your choice. You'll notice here at the top here, I can say, I'll try that again, I can say hide group indicators. Right? And that hides it. Remember, teacher dashboard is only viewable to teachers. Right? So students won't see, won't have access to this. Right? Only you have access to this as their classroom teacher. If you want to display this on the smart board or up on the, the projected screen, that's fine. That's up to you. And teachers often do. And that's where you may want to hide these group indicators if you're going to, you know, have a look at what's going on with teacher dashboard. Right? And show that to your class. Right, but that's up to you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Okay. Let's keep moving forward because I want to show you or give you a bit of an idea about the point of those differentiated groups or connect that in. So, so far, I've talked about students sharing work with you, right, and that you can then view that work. So, for instance, that science presentation. Right? So that elephant's presentation that Elsie did, and now the teacher can go in and view that elephant's presentation. Right? So that's you viewing work that the students have shared with you. Right? But what about the opposite question? What about work that you want to share with students? For instance, a task you want to distribute to them, a PDF you want them to read, right? a presentation that you want, um, 
want them to work on collaboratively, right? How do you, through Teacher Dashboard, distribute work to students? And that's where we start talking about a little function called Smart Copy, uh, soon to be called Smart Share. Now, to get access to this, if you're looking at your dashboard, just if you're a primary school and you're looking at the general folder, you'll see it's just next to the general folder. If you're a high school and you're looking at the subject folder of the subject you teach, it's just next to that subject, fol uh, subject folder on the dashboard. So you need to be looking at the dashboard. Click the, the dashboard link. There's that smart copy link. I'm going to click it once and I'm going to go through this very quickly. Right? By the way, all of this is explained in video, so if you don't quite catch up with us, that's fine. You can look at the video later. Um, so, what do I do first? I want to select either select an existing document. That's one of my documents, right? So this is the document that I'm going to distribute to my class. I'll choose a previously selected document like this assessment task template, right? And I'll choose that. I could create a blank document. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to go into the reasons why. Your TD manager might be able to explain that for you. I'm going to hit next. Then I need to choose how I want to distribute the document. I've got four choices. I can give an individual copy to each student. So that's great if I want them to work on their own copy of this assessment task. That's probably the most common way to distribute. What if this was a reading that I wanted to do? Maybe a PDF of an article I've got from a newspaper. Then I'd want to share with them as read only. I don't need them to edit it. I just want them to read it. So I'd choose that one. What if I wanted to share something with them? Maybe it's a Google Doc that they have view only access to them, to it. But I wanted them to comment on the document. Then I could share, read, comment. And what if this was a slide deck that I wanted them to collaboratively work, collaboratively work on the slide deck? Say that each student took their own slide and started to add content to their own slide. Right? So they're the four different ways to do a copy, to distribute work. I'm going to choose the first one, which is to give every student their own copy, and then hit next. I get to name the document, so I might call this uh, Assessment 1 on, um, on Ancient Rome. Right? The other thing I might do is personalise it by typing in, uh, I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can get a better look at that, percentage F percentage L. What that does is, as you can see, it puts the student's name, it appends whoever the student's name is, not Mary Smith, but whoever their name is, to the document so that they can see that in their Google Drive and they know that's, a, that's intended for them. I'm going to do that and hit next. Then it asks me, who do I want to distribute this to? I can distribute to the whole class, I can deselect everyone and just distribute it to selected individuals, or, and this is where my groups come in, I can now choose my differentiated groups, whether my walkers or my runners or my joggers, right? That's where your coloured groups come in, okay? So you can differentiate the way you distribute the task. I'm going to send it to everyone, hit next. If you're following me on this, by the way, and you get to a blue button that says start copy, probably not a good idea to, to hit it because that will actually copy the document that you're doing, unless you really want to do it. Uh, you can delete an existing document if it's already there, something with the same name, or leave it untouched. I'm not going to go into why that is. Uh, again, that's explained in the video. And then next, just gives me a review to say, is the, are these the settings that you want? The title, who it's going to. Uh, in this case, it's going to the destination folder. If you're working in a primary school where you've got multiple folders, you can see, and you may have noticed this if you're working through this yourself, you get to select the folders that you can send this to. And then you'd hit Start Copy. I'm not going to do that. Two things with Start Copy. One, it's not immediate. It can take up to 10 minutes to distribute. So don't use this as a kind of a get out of jail free card, you know, just before your lesson starts. Give yourself a bit of time. And second, it's like email. That is, if you send it, you can't get it back, right? It gets distributed. The question often comes up, well, if I've sent something out, how do I delete it? You can't delete it, but the students can delete it. So you'd need to ask the students to delete it. Or you can go back and choose this delete student doc, then copy, and override it with something else. All right, so that's smart copy. I know I went through that very quickly, but you'll be able to see the videos on the TD Project site, which is here. These, um, 
TD in 60 seconds, and you can watch the videos and learn about the Smart Copy Wizard. There it is there. Any questions on that or any, any other things that come up from Smart Copy? All right. So we've covered now students sharing work with you, you sharing work with students. One last thing before I hand over to, uh, sorry, two last things before I hand over to Lenva, who's going to talk about some of the new features. The first one is the sharing tab. So the sharing tab lets me see documents that are not yet shared with me. That is, that is, they're not filed away in the folders. It also lets me see public documents. Now, when I say public documents, I mean documents that a student shares with an email address outside of the student domain, like their personal email address or their parents' email address. I also get to see the opposite of that. That is... An, uh, a document that might be created outside of the student's world, say a student created with their, um, with their personal email address, their personal Google account, or maybe a parent created a document, or a student from another school, right, like outside the system created a document, or just a friend, right? They create the document, share it back with the student, you would see those documents listed here, right? Now think about that. You're now seeing things that you weren't able to see before Teacher Dashboard, right? Documents that weren't shared with you, documents from outside the domain, either that the student shares outside or are outside and shared back with the students, right? That's the sharing tab, really, really useful. Just while I think about it, something else I didn't point out when I was looking at um, the dashboard, and Lemba will, will wrap me over the knuckles for forgetting to say this, You'll notice that next to each student's name, we have our open folder. If I click open, that actually opens the student's Google Drive folder. So now I can see everything that's in that student's Google Drive. If they had a thousand documents in there, I'm not gonna all see all a thousand in Teacher Dashboard, but I'll see all those documents here, okay? The other thing that it does is let you send a quick email. So you can click that to email the student. All right, last thing. So that's the sharing tab, dashboard, quickly looked at Gmail and looked at class info. The last thing is the interact function. So teachers get very excited when they see this. So I'm just gonna go back to, uh, actually I won't use interact there, I'm gonna use interact with Elsie. So uh, teachers get very excited about this because they, they realize that teacher dashboard can help them see what students are doing in their Chrome browser. So you can see here I'm looking at Elsie and I'm looking at the browser tabs that Elsie has open. Where's Elsie? Well, remember I showed you, there's Elsie here, logged in, right? So you can see she's got her email, she's got her Google Drive, and she's got her elephant's presentation. What if Elsie goes to a site which is slightly off task, say so nick.com, right? So she's now looking at nick.com. I refresh the screen, and in Teacher Dashboard, I can now see when it pops up, there's that Nickelodeon Games. Right? Now, I might say, oh, well, actually, Elsie, I don't want you to be looking at Nickelodeon. I can send Elsie a message. I'll just zoom out a little bit. Um, please go back to your task, Elsie, and send Elsie a message. And, of course, that's very quietly. Sends her a message. You don't have to disturb the rest of the class. And Elsie gets that message, right? Tries to get the hint. Let's say a few minutes go by. And Elsie's still looking at nick.com. What can you do? Zooming in again so you have a bit of a look. You can see a little cross next to the tab. Right? So um, I'm going to click the cross, and that's going to close that tab, right, for Elsie. And you'll see now that nick.com tab is closed. So you can see you can do a little bit of monitoring and a little bit of control of what's going on with student computers, what they're doing in their browser, okay? But here's the kicker, everyone. Before you get too excited, remember this only works in Chrome. So students can and do get around this. So my message is don't treat this like a foolproof monitoring tool. It's not. 
students can and will get around this tool. Instead, use it as a, as a positive collaboration tool in the classroom, and I'll show you how. You might have a website that you want to share with Elsie or other students in the class, but it's got a really long URL, right? So what you can do is you can open a tab for Elsie. I can click this Open Tab button, and now I'll, I'll just type in a short one just in the interest of time. So the, Her the Herald site. I can open that tab for Elsie. So here I click Open Tab, and now the site gets open for Elsie. How cool is that? Right? Particularly for younger kids, you can open tabs for them. Right? That's a positive, collaborative way to show the value of this. Right? Also, you can open a tab for the whole of your class. Right? So I can send a tab out to all of the all of the class and the tab opens immediately. There's no delay. Right? Just as you saw the Herald site come up straight away, right? Those tabs will come up. So that's really cool. That's really useful. So that's another collaborative way you can use it positively. One more, one more collaborative way. Say Elsie's doing some great work on her elephants presentation and you want to show that to the rest of the class, right? And show the great work that Elsie's doing, right? Well, you can look at her current screen. Click on current screen and that will bring up the current screen. You might want to project this to the class and capture that whole current screen and show the class, well, look, here's, look at the excellent work that Elsie's doing at the moment and demonstrate that to the class, right? You may also want to capture that. You can save this, right, for later as an example of her work, right, as a work sample that you may want to file away in your own records, okay? So it's there for you as well. So there's a couple of collaborative ways, positive ways, that you can use this Interact feature. So, folks, that's, that's a really quick um, demonstration, 15 minutes short, because we made a late start. I want to hand over now, unless there's any... Any questions? I know that um, um, you've been answering a few questions there, which is great. Okay. All right. So, um, so what I've done here is um, I'm actually in the demo school and I've landed into the new look teacher dashboard. So you see, it does look completely different. The big difference that you'll notice is that there are no buttons. So it's just as I was um, So the landing page is now actually entered inside your class completely. Um, the buttons have disappeared, and when you log in, you come into into your class. You have a drop down arrow to the left here, where all of your other classes will sit. So you see, just on the same screen, you'll be able to flip between classes here. Um, so if you're teaching or if you've got visibility into 20 classes, they're just going to be listed here and you can flip between them here without needing to come in and out of that, um, that teacher dashboard screen and the buttons um, that we used to have. So everything um, is going to be all on the same page. Saves time and saves clicks. Um, the other big difference that, that you probably see here um, is the look of the student panels. So student panels are still there. They're still going to be uh, similar to before. Um, they have the same uh, same liberal um, view into student docs. So you've got your rollovers the same way as we just told, showed you. Just a nice cleaner look, uh, a more modern look. Um, Lemba, I'm and just wondering if you could maybe zoom in on Chrome a little bit so that um, sure. so that you get a better, can, better look. I'm on a presentation. I'm in a prison. I'm in, uh, I'm just coming in a little bit. I'm yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Is that good? Yeah, much better. Okay. All right. So, um, so as you said, uh, as I said, uh, it's uh, it's just the same rollovers as Greg showed you, but just a cleaner look. So you can see on the left, you've got that information about the doc and who it shared with. Sorry, that's on the right, and then on the left, you've got the uh, the thumbnail of the document. And then again, clicking onto a document to take you directly there, but um, I don't have permission on that one yet. Um, so this, um, the, the panels act in exactly the same way. Who last modified it uh, sits in the same column, and, and how long ago that took place is in the same column there, but the look is a little different. Um, the other thing that you're going to see um, by uh, that has changed is that uh, you can see up here when I go when I roll over Michael's name. Up pops 
several colours. So what this means is that now you can put students into multiple groups within a folder. So we are in the reading folder, same as you were before when Greg showed you the, the classic View Teacher dashboard. But now if I want to put students into several groups inside that folder, they can be in multiple groups um, within a folder. Now to do that is just a slight different way to how we did it before. Um, we've got the folder view here um, on the left, oh, sorry, on the right of the student's name. We've got the email and then we've got another button which is called the edit button. If we click that button, the whole uh, panel flips around and here we can just select some groups. This is where the groups are selected here. Um, this is not necessarily going to be the colours that it's going to be the final um, view, but this is just the demonstration one. So you can see if I wanted to um, Richard into another group, I'll put him into a yellow bar group and I can put him into the, um, the, the aqua group, etc. So within this reading folder, he can go into, um, into multiple groups. And I think eventually there's going to be something like 16 or 20 choices um, of groups that you can make within this each folder. So, Lenda, so I'm, I'm just thinking that, that multiple folders is really useful because we've had requests from um, uh, from English teachers about being able to group kids according to both, you know, their reading skills and their writing skills and, uh, you know, various yeah, other things. Right. So so yeah. that's a really yeah. useful thing. So, so yes, yeah, so so if you were looking at Richard, you know, his, his Navy group might be his reading, the book he's reading now, but his ACWA group might be um, students I need to conference to first thing tomorrow morning or, or things like this. So you can, you've got, um, you know, you can have multiple um, purposes for sure. for whatever you're doing what, inside the folder. Lenva, where do we indicate what those colours mean? Um, in the same place as before, it, well, it's not the same place, but it, as it was before, so over the toolbars now move from over the right-hand side to the left-hand side, so the toolbar sits down this left-hand side, and where we go to groups here, you'll see here are those groups, and this is where Excellent. you can, oops, sorry, and this is where you indicate, you can just, you know, type it here, what they mean. Excellent. I'm just thinking, Lenva, in the interest of time, what may be yeah. good to show people is the new smart share, the new smart copy function. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. Um, so, yes, uh, so the big, that's one of the big changes is the groups. The second big change is the smart share. And um, and this, um, I'm just going to shrink it down so you can just see. So instead of what you saw Greg show you when he had to go next, next, next through a whole lot of panels, now everything is going to be on one screen. So you only got one screen, and you can just fill out from here. A couple of big changes in here, if I zoom in again, just um, a couple of big changes in here, um, oops, a bit too far, um, is that you can um, now, see, you can now pick up multiple files. So before you could only pick up one file to share to students, now you can select up to five. So you could take five from your drive if you wish, or you can create new, so I can take one from my drive here, one. While you're doing that, Lenva, is it possible to get a folder of files and share them? Not yet. Okay. No, we don't have the APIs to get the folder. Okay, no, no problem. Really um, so you could take one from your drive, you could take a new, a blank document and give it a name. Um, so you can, um, you can take multiple documents. Um, instead of needing to do the percent F and the percent L thing to put the student's name on, you just check this box that says add name. And that will add name to the file. And then, if, then the screen that took you through whether you want to send out a copy or a or a shared collaborative document sits here, and you just choose which what type of document you want to send out. So everything on one page. The other big change is down here is that now, if you teach multiple classes, you can send these documents to multiple classes. So if you had a quiz. Um, for and you taught three English classes, you could send the, all those three English classes the same quiz. So you could send at the same time multiple documents to multiple classes. Um, or you could do exactly the same as what you do and choose by grouping or by um, or by those coloured buttons that were in there as well. And then of course, if you want to set this document to be overwritten, um, same instead of having a screen, it's just. Yes, overwrite it or uncheck it. No, don't overwrite it. So I guess the summary there, Lember, is that it's much simpler to use 
and it's much yep. more flexible. So you've you've exactly. you've knocked the two main things on the head there. It's yep. simpler yep. and it's more flexible. That's fantastic. Yeah, and, it, and it saved about uh, about eight clicks. Yep. So. Excellent. So, Excellent. Yeah. Can, that's I, the big thing. I'm just conscious that that we've just gone past our 4:30 um, time yeah. time frame. Just, Obviously, I'm we. Just we say one more yep. very quick thing because this is a huge thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And that is that is the advanced search. So as um, Brian oh, okay. used that filter to search through the the um, the title of a document, now you can also search a full text search. So you can search for any word anywhere in the document. That's fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Um, could I get you just before we finish, and and, and I, I'm really thankful for everyone's patience here. Um, maybe just another couple of minutes with Lenva, who's going to talk quickly about the Engage product. Can you do that, Lenva, for us? Sure. And I can only show you that. I don't have a working um, view of that. I can only show you that in a screenshot. A, a demo screenshot. Yeah, that's fine. Right. And I'm not sure how big I can get this. Can maybe I'm, present. Let me present. Yeah. I'm just going to present. How's that look? Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is really a mock-up of it, and um, and I don't have a working thing, so it will look similar, but not exactly like this. Um, what this, this is going to be is this will be a a way of you being able to not only push out assignments or or worksheets or or documents to students, pushing out whole units of work. So it's intended to be more holistic, more about um, units of work rather than just single. Um, little documents. So what you can do here is this is a teacher's view. So the teacher can choose um, the, the groupings or, or, or in, enter the groupings so the students might choose it. But the teacher works out how the, um, the students are going to be grouped. And what the teacher sees then is anything else that's due in from those students. So the teacher gets a, a, a little vision of what that, what, what that student's commitment is in the future, that group of students. So they don't need to um, assign documents that are all going to be due on the same day, etc. Um, the, the teacher would then put some goals in here, or outcomes, or, or it could be something like um, uh, learning intentions, etc. And then also they can add resources to this, so they can start the students off on their work with some resources. There's a very bad echo on the line, so could somebody mute it? Mute it. Um, uh, the teacher then would push out the document. Uh, this is this is the, the actual document. So the teacher gives a, a task and pushes out the doc or the presentation or whatever it is the student is going to do. So this is the work from the student that's going to come back. And this work can be embargoed, so the teacher would set a due date for that work. And at that, when that time elapses, then that work is shut off. Students, they can't edit it anymore, and the teacher would be able to then... Um, mark it or give feedback on it and then release it back to the student. So this is the actual work the students do over here. And then the last bit of it is the marking criteria, so how this teacher is going to be marking this work. So this could be just a, a list of, of marks out of 10 or it could be links to rubrics or however that's going to be marked. So the whole thing is completely flexible as to however you want to um, use it. Uh, when the teacher sends out those worksheets or those documents to students, here is what it will look something like this, where the teacher would give some information about it, link it to the document, and then set that due date, that embargo date. And then what the students then see in their drive is something similar but a little bit different. So they only see their own groups here. They only see when their own docs are due in or their own um, assignments are due in. They see all the goals. Um, and you see here that students can then also, if the teacher wishes, can suggest goals. So the teachers, the students can have input and collaboration into these units of, of work. The students can also add their own resources into here. So the team they're working in might take a little bit of a, a different bend and then they can put resources in. And then the students can also, if they wish, um, submit their work but also add other evidence to this, so they want to submit extra bits or supportive um, documents as well, they can um, they can add those in and submit them as well. Excellent. So that's, um, that's, that's the, the theory of it, and it's not exactly what it's going to look like, but, but it's, the, um, it's the idea of it. Thanks so much, Lenva. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just gone past um, 4.37, so I, I Sorry, think we'll we probably... Can... Um, wrap things up, but we've got some questions. Yes, questions, please. Uh, just wondering when that um, new look is going to be visible to staff and students. 
Great question. I figured we'd get that one. So, Lenva, um, time frames yeah. on the new user interface yeah. and the engaged product. Okay. I, I am told the new, the new interface will be out this year, before Christmas. Okay. The engaged product, we're hopeful before Christmas, but with um, it hasn't gone into beta testing yet, so it just depends on that beta testing and the results of that testing. Sure. So... So expectations are new user interface sometime this year, uh, the engaged product possibly this year, but but also possibly next yeah. early next year. Yeah, we'll have a better idea. We'll... Sure. Okay. Excellent. Any other questions before we finish up, folks? On the Hangout or via the VC? Awesome. Okay, well, um, I'm going to thank um, Lenva very much for coming in. In case you weren't aware, Lenva's actually coming to us from the west coast of the US, where she's uh, over there for work for the week. But uh, I think it's just gone past 10.30 so in the evening. So, Lenva, thanks so much for um, giving up your time uh, so late in the evening. Your time as above and beyond the call of duty. We really appreciate that. Um, so thanks again, Lenva. Thanks to everyone for coming along. Um, we appreciate your time uh, on the VC. Apologies again for the, the glitch with getting the, um, uh, getting the screen shared. Uh, thanks to Greg for monitoring your questions. And, of course, if you've got any other questions around Teacher Dashboard, always feel free to contact Greg or I. Talk with your TD manager at your school, and uh, we'll be happy to help you, uh, help you with anything you need with Teacher Dashboard. We'll see you later, folks. Take care. Bye.